We're going to outer space right now. No kidding. You're looking at two astronauts on the International Space Station. We've got Mike Fossil and also Ron Garin from Yonkers, New York. He married a woman from Brooklyn. He went to SUNY Oneonta. <laughs> uh, we're so proud of you. How are things going up there? Good, Greg. Uh, things are going really good. Uh, we're getting ready for uh, Space Shuttle Atlantis to show up in a couple weeks, so we're busy uh, preparing for that. Preparing for that. You know, everybody was concerned. We were talking a lot about uh, some space junk or an asteroid almost missing Earth. Uh, by chance, did you see it go by where you are? Uh, no, we got word about that, uh, but it was it was too far away for us to see. Uh, glad it missed. I have a feeling the astronauts just rolled their eyes at each other. I could have been imagining it. Listen, where are you guys? Right, you're in the International Space Station. Where over Earth are you? How far up are you? And what's beneath you right now? Well, we're uh, about 250 miles up, uh, and about 10 minutes ago, we passed over Italy. So uh, we're, we're probably a long way from Italy now at five miles a second. But, uh, um, you know, we're, we travel around the Earth uh, every 90 minutes. So, uh, you know, we get 16 sunrises and sunsets a day. So it's a, a pretty, pretty interesting and incredible place to live and work. How long have you guys been up there? When do you come back? And can you give us an idea what your day is like? What do you do all day long in space? Well, I launched uh, on a Russian rocket uh, from Kazakhstan on April 4th, um, so I've been here almost almost three months now. I, I return in September. Uh, Mike got here a couple weeks, about two and almost and weeks two and a half weeks ago, yeah. uh, and you'll be here until November. Yeah. Is that correct? So uh, a typical day is, you know, we, we do a lot of science on board. Well, you know, the main purpose of having this uh, orbital facility is to conduct uh, research that we simply can't conduct on the ground, to conduct it in the microgravity environment that we can... Um, that we have on board here. And so, you know, a great deal of our time is uh, taken up by that. We are just finishing up the uh, construction phase of the station, or we just di did finish that up. So uh, we are fully into the, what we call the utilization phase of the International Space Station, where we're going to get a lot of return on the investment. Uh, we're going to have a lot of uh, scientific discoveries. So um, a great portion of our day is taken up with the science. We also have to maintain the space station uh, to keep it going. Like I said, we're getting ready for the uh, space shuttle to dock, so we have a lot of preparation for that. That's going to be a very uh, challenging and busy mission. So. Uh, you know, that, uh, that pretty much fills up uh, a day. And uh, plus, we also, in order to keep our, 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 our bodies in shape and to counteract the effects of microgravity, we have to exercise about two hours a day, too. So that's another part of our day as well. What kind of exercise do you do? We do a combination. A combination of cardiovascular exercise on a on an exercise bicycle, and also on a treadmill. Now, how do you run on a treadmill in zero gravity? Wearing a harness and held down with bungee cords. And we do weightlifting. Well, weightlifting doesn't exactly make sense. So it's a resistive exercise machine that uses pressure cylinders, so we can simulate, you know, pushing up against that force. Show them your muscles. <laughs> Show them your muscles. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is so cool. Yeah. Next Friday is the last time that Atlantis uh, will go up. And then, obviously, you have to deal with the Russians for a ride into space. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, it's, it's a necessary thing that we have to do to take that next step. Uh, that next step will be to get it outside of Earth orbit, to get out, outside of low Earth orbit. And so in order to do that, you know, the, the funding environment that we lived in required us to, to retire the space shuttle. So, um, but it also brings out a very interesting part of the International Space Station, and that's in the international cooperation that, uh, that came of it. And, you know, 50 years ago, one nation launched one na man into space. And now today, you know, 50 years later, the six of us on board the space station represent three different countries, uh, and we represent the 15 nations of our international partnership. Um, and so it's, you know, what started out as an antagonistic competition between two nations really has uh, evolved into an amazing example of international cooperation. So um, through this next phase of, of, of the space program, of space exploration, uh, we are going to be reliant on another nation, uh, namely Russia, to carry astronauts into space and, and to return them to the Earth. But that 
is going to lead to something uh, bigger and better down the road. Something uh, bigger and better down the road. A couple of quick observations. Number one, lack of spacesuits. You guys are casual. Yeah, Looks than... like you're uh, ready for a weekend uh, around the house. That's fantastic. Things have changed over the past couple of decades. Do you ever get bored up there, Mike? I mean, you're in outer space going five miles a second, but for months and months on end, I would imagine even in space you can get bored. Is that right? Well, this is my uh, third space flight. I've had two short flights on the space shuttle, and now I've just exceeded my time on the space shuttle. A space shuttle mission's no more than about two weeks. So I've just crossed that threshold now, so I'm, I'm in new territory for me. I have not had time to get bored yet, but if, if when you do get a free moment, though, what you really want to do is just go look out the window at the uh, beautiful Earth down below. Speaking of windows, are those windows behind you? I see two hatches, two round objects. It looks like there may be windows with the window shades drawn. Uh, any way we could take a peek out the window? Probably not, but uh, I don't know. What are those things back there? Yeah, the, the, we are in the Japanese laboratory right now, and those are two uh, windows that look out. This is uh, it's dark. It's uh, it's not. We're on the we're on the dark side of the Earth right now, so you, we could open them, but you won't see much. This is a airlock that we can put experiments out into the vacuum of space, and there's a platform out there, a back porch, if you will, where we put uh, experiments, and there's a, uh, a robotic arm right out there where we can reach in, grab things out of the uh, out of the airlock, and put them out into the vacuum of space. So this, these are just two of the many windows we have on board the Interna International Space Station. Ron, I follow you on Twitter. Your updates are amazing. Astro underscore Ron. You can follow me, by the way, if you feel like it. Great <laughs> Kelly Fox 5. You'd make my year. You can follow Rosanna Scotto. Rosanna Scotto, it's easy. And uh, gentlemen, uh, uh, safe voyage and yeah. uh, be safe. Thanks so, so much for joining us. Hey, Ron, do you want to say anything to the people back in Yonkers? I mean, you're a long way from Yonkers. Well, of course I do. I want to say hi to everybody in Yonkers, and, uh, you know, thanks for, you know, after my uh, space shuttle m mission that I flew with Mike, by the way, you know, I had this just an unbelievable homecoming. It was really uh, heartwarming to, to see everybody, and, uh, you know, that's where my roots are, and, uh, you know, I love everybody in Yonkers, and uh, just want to say hi. And uh, since you brought up Twitter, I have to mention we have Astro underscore Aggie here, so don't forget about him, too. Excellent. Safe trip. Take care. Take care. It was great talking to you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WNYW TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KWTX. Hey guys, this is Dan Ingham from uh, Waco and KWTX. Can you hear me? Hey, Dan, we have you loud and clear. You've got Mike and Ron here. Hey, guys, how y'all doing today? Hey, we're, we're doing great. How about you? How's the weather? Had any rain? No, man, we, we, it's bad in Texas. It's about as bad a drought as we've seen in a long time. Uh, yeah, I, I understand that. We're, uh, we both live in the Clear Lake area down in Houston. So. Yeah. All right, Snaps, when do we want to start this? Just count it down and start it? Just count it down and start it. All right. In three, two, one. Welcome back. Well, it's space exploration has always been a, a goal and a dream of many Americans, and we're lucky enough today to talk to two men who are living that dream, the thing that a lot of us boys and girls would have liked to have done when we were younger. Joining us now from the uh, International Space Station right now, Michael Fossum and uh, Ron Guerin. First of all, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, it's our pleasure to join you in Waco today. Uh, Michael, I want to start with you, since you are the, uh, the resident Texan, uh, so to speak, in the uh, space station right now. Uh, tell me a little bit about your background, how you became to, a guy who graduated from Texas A&M, went to McAllen High School, and is now, you know, miles and miles above Earth. Yeah, Dan, you let out the secret that I'm an Aggie. I can't believe it. Now everybody knows. 
<laughs> uh, for me, this was been a this has been a dream since childhood, and that that dream kind of led me to A and M, and then into the Air Force, where I did uh, advanced studies in engineering and got into the world of flight test. And uh, one thing eventually led to another. It was a kind of a uh, half a lifetime of persistence and preparation, and uh, it's paying off huge now. I'm living the dream. Sounds like you certainly are, Ron. Let me ask you. I think a lot of our viewers would like to know, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? I know you've been there for several months now. I mean, what kind of things are you guys doing up in the space station? Well, yeah, I've been here for about uh, three months now, Dan. And, um, you know, a, a great part of our day is taken up with science. Um, you know, we are in the process right now of utilizing this incredible orbital complex that was built specifically to perform the kind of science that you simply can't do on the Earth. So a good portion of our day is, uh, is scientific experimentation. Uh, we're kind of lab assistants with researchers on the ground. Uh, a, a portion of our day is just simply maintaining the space station, keeping it running, keeping everything uh, ship shape, if you will. Um, we need to exercise every day to counteract the effects of microgravity on our bodies. And so, you know, those things pretty much take up, uh, take up a whole day and keep us pretty busy. Ron, I, I got to ask you. We're also excited. Guys, uh, Ron and I exercise in, in, in microgravity. <laughs> We do a combination of resistive exercise. We have an exercise bicycle, much like you might have at home or in a gym. We have a treadmill, too, but that one's been modified, so we're wearing a harness and have bungee cords uh, that literally hold us down so we can run on that surface. And for weightlifting, well, weightlifting doesn't make much sense, and so we use a resistive exercise machine that's got pressure cylinders. It's kind of like a universal gym that uh, allows us to get a very good, uh, very good workout. Ron, you were mentioning it earlier, you're talking about the experiments you guys are doing. What, can, you, can you give us a couple examples of the things you guys are doing up there? Yeah, you got a few hours. Um, we've got we've got quite a few experiments going on. We've got experiments in, pro, in protein crystal growth uh, that could potentially lead to new medicines. Uh, we've got uh, a camera operating right now that's taking pictures of uh, different uh, uh, crop growing areas of the world, um, specifically in the northern regions and short growing seasons. Uh, we've got uh, experiments looking at the uh, to try and better understand the Earth's core uh, to hopefully be able to. To lead to better ways of predicting natural disasters like volcanoes and earthquakes. Uh, a lot of medical research. We're looking into uh, uh, battling uh, things like osteoporosis, uh, vaccine development. We've recently uh, made some breakthroughs in, in um, salmonella vaccines. So the list goes on and on. Um, um, it, like I said, it would take a few hours to describe them all, but you know, 99.9% .9 of all the experiments that we are doing on the space station are going to directly benefit planet Earth and the inhabitants of planet Earth. So it's a it's a really important orbital facility that we have up here. That sounds really fascinating. I, I, before I get out of here, uh, let me, I give you guys both an opportunity to say hello to anyone. And I guess Michael, if you wanted to give a little gig, I'm sure some of our Aggie fans wouldn't mind that either. Oh, yeah. Well, Ron, Ron's an Aggie dad, too. We're both Aggie dads, actually. So, uh, yeah, a big, uh, big shout-out. I've got a lot of friends in the Waco area. I've got a lot of Baylor Bear friends, too. But i got to say, uh, gig em Ags. Thanks. Yeah, I'll have to add to that since he brought up that I'm also an Aggie dad. I'm also a Longhorn dad, too. So we'll, we'll have to well, tell complete him, disclosure here. So. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for all the great work you're doing for our country up there, and stay safe. We'll wrap things up with a little bit more news and weather after the break. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event.